Hey everybody, welcome in. Garbage Time Sports, Joe Shad, Clayton Romitty, and when you see Clayton, you know we're going to be talking some soccer today as we kind of enter the quote-unquote off-season of the sports calendar. We have news on the soccer front, the U.S. men's soccer team fire Greg Berhalter. First and foremost, I am absolutely shocked it happened. Um, I thought they were going to delay the process, review his tape again, blame everything on Tim Weah's red card there, and, uh, you know, rehire him for a third time, per se. But at the end of the day, we got the job done uh, We <laughs> in a bad way at, at the tournament. But um, they made the right decision. It's time to get some more excitement in the locker room. It's time to make the players more uncomfortable about their positions. Um, you're seeing reports that, you know, players are reaching out to the Federation to kind of get Greg's back, which we, who knows if they're true, but this team, it, it's time to get rid of the entitlement that everyone has a spot in this team, and it's time to open up all competition um, at every position. I think Pulisic's about the only safe bet on the team right now, um, and then we'll see what the new manager comes in. But, you know, first steps to rebuilding here in the next two years there's plenty of candidates out there right now that we're discussing, and everyone has their eye on Jurgen Klopp. And don't get me wrong, I would be ecstatic if we hired him as our coach, as our manager, but it is simply real reality. It's more realistic to say that that is not going to happen. There's reports he already rejected the contract, which the, the optimistic part of me says, hey, you know, Let's give this. Let's double his offer every single time he says no until he says yes. Like, let's get this get man at all costs. The World Cup being home is going to rake in the most amount of money this U.S. Soccer Federation's ever seen for the for the U.S. teams. We already have the stadiums built. Let's just give him the entire World Cup earnings. You know, let's, I want to win it. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I'm I'm sure the Federation feels a little bit differently than I do about this, but at the end of the day. Klopp is probably not in town. If he is, it's going to be the best hire ever. We're going to have a blast for the next two years rebuilding. Optimism is going to be at an all-time high. That being said, and I'm totally going to butcher his name, but I know who this man is, and a lot of you you know, listening might know who this is um, just on the team he was coaching, but we're talking about Herv Renard from formerly the Saudi Arabia national team coach. And if you'll remember, in the last World Cup, Saudi Arabia beat Argentina in the group stage. And they had no business you know, even remotely being there. Um, and this manager has a proven track record internationally. I think he spent some time in the AFCON, which is the, the African Federation, um, coaching Ivory Coast, which is a pretty formidable team. He brought and won the AFCON Cup, which is an incredibly hard co uh, competition to win. So he's he loves the international coaching jobs. I'm pretty sure I'm sure it's for the work life balance when you only have to coach, you know, eight to ten games a year. You sure. only have a couple week stints four times a year for, you know, hands on like, you know, practices and things like that. But overall, Herb Renard, I, I he's another hire. I'd be absolutely ecstatic if he came into our coach. He's an incredible motivator. There's a clip that was just posted um, about his halftime speech at the Saudi Arabia game. And I'll tell you what, for a soccer, for a soccer manager, this man will make you run through a wall. It is impressive. So uh, we need that type of mentality. I think he's a, he'd be a great fit. Um, you know, that being said, we'll see what happens. I have a few different categories. I think Klopp is clearly the u unanimous number one. I think in the pipe green Pipe dream category. We're going to go classic me of writing it down and then not being able to pronounce it. All right, here we go. In the pipe, in the pipe dream category, we're going to go with Zinedine Zidane. There is no chance this man ends up. He's a former Real Madrid manager. He's been retired or not retired, but he's just been out of commission for a while. We'll say, um, and there's, there's news that he's getting club offers right now, so there's not really a chance he drops to us. But just another one of those Klopp-level coaches that you'd love to come in. It would be so iconic. Um, and maybe, maybe just maybe, one of these big big guys are going to you know swoop in and want to coach at the 2026 World Cup, especially because in this World Cup it's the expanded format. So I think there's about, I think it's 48 teams um, in the World Cup. So it's going to be you know new new tournament format. And this is the most prestigious soccer tournament in the entire world. 
obviously. Uh, I think anyone would well to, would love to be a part of it, and oftentimes it's very hard to manage a club while also managing an international team. I'm not even aware of anyone in the modern era doing that. So um, Zinedine Zidane would be an incredible pickup, but that ain't going to happen either. So don't, nobody needs to get their hopes up on that. I think you move into the realistic you, you got to get into the mind of the U S soccer federation and put yourself in their shoes. And what are they like? They like former players and former coaches and former player sons and former coaches sons uh, on this national team. And that's no different for the coaching staff. So in the realistic U S USA candidates, um, I put three, I think in, in no particular order, I think maybe um, in no particular order, we'll go Landon Donovan at number one, I think if he's a Fox soccer analyst right now, at least with his hire, he'd have the heart of the, like he cares about the USA team. And that's something I I really want out of an ex coach. And if we're not going to go international, um, you have to get a guy who is the heart and soul, you know, of what I'd call the grit era on the team or the, you had guys that were not necessarily incredibly skilled, but they were playing up to a level um, because they like to, you know, buckle down when the going gets tough. He he's famous for scoring his his uh, 90th minute goal to move on and um, in the South Africa World Cup and I think that you know I'm not saying he'd be the best hire but if you're looking at only former USA candidate pools he'd at least be interesting you know to hear and his attack attack minded too like we need a coach that can score goals at this point and you know we can bring in other assistant coaches to you know deal with the defense but overall our offense has been absolutely anemic recently so it would be it would be nice to see a striker come through. Um, do kind of you think ahead, do you think the guys would respect Landon Donovan with that haircut? I think if he became the manager, he's going to go full bald. Like you just got to commit. You know, you pull a Bob Bradley here, shave it all Fair. off. But yeah, that was a rough one. That was a rough. That was a rough <laughs> picture. That was a rough picture. That was bad. Real bad. That Sorry, keep all, going. <laughs> all time worst haircut right there for sure. But he's he's been an incredible player, and overall. Um, you know, at least, like I said, he's he's got the former player in the tough the tougher era mentality, uh, as well as other realistic candidates for the USA pool. Stu Holden would be an inter- interesting one. I mean, he talked about it during the game. He's also a former player in that same era of players, and he talked about on the USA Uruguay game that he you know he was holding himself back from putting on his cleats and just walking out to the field and joining the team because you know a guy that wants to be there, loves the competition. And again, soccer analysts like he knows the game pretty well on both ends of the both ends of the field. So, uh, wouldn't be the worst pick. Again, I'm I'm wanting more of an international coach who has a proven track record. But if we're at least going in house, get somebody, get a former player that the guys can get behind, and not not one from the 1990s era, but maybe one of the 2010 teams. And the last to round it out, it's fun, all these guys are in the 2010 team, I guess. But Steve Chirindolo, he's a current LAFC head coach. A lot of talk about him kind of being in talks with the U.S. Soccer Federation. I think he's the most likely because he has managerial experience. LAFC is not a bad MLS team, but hot dang, if we co- if we hire another MLS coach as our manager two years out to this World Cup with really no serious competition beforehand, I think everyone's going to be in uproar. But, you know, at least it's somebody new than Greg Berhalter. It, it needed to go. He started off well, but... At the end of the day, we just weren't scoring goals and we didn't produce results. And this is a results-driven position. If you can't win games, it doesn't matter, you know, how good of a how good of buddies you are with the guys off the field. I want a dude who's an absolute bulldozer to come in, you know, build the culture from the ground up here, and you know, light a fire. We need a motivator, and that's what I think. As as men on the field, we need a motivator. So my final category before I I, I think this will be the end of my you know spiel here, but is the hilarious hires category. <laughs> and in this category, it's uh, it's never going to happen, but it would be absolutely hilarious if it did. Um, and, and number one on that list is Alexi Lalas. I, Alexi. Yeah, I think it would be so funny to see him as head coach. And I said this before about Greg. The, it, it was really tough to have him as coach because he's so vanilla in personality. He's wearing his T-shirt and his little Nike shoes out there and jeans. And there's like no personality in the coach. Um, and I think you kind of need that when you're being a leader of a team. So I think Alexi Lalas would be absolutely hilarious to see as head coach. I think he has the personality. Tactically, 
I don't know. I don't know enough. You know, I don't I don't know what he's got in the bag there. And at least he's a soccer analyst, but he's usually a pretty hot take analyst. So, but who knows? Hot, hot takes are the ones that generate all the clicks, I guess. So I can't hold it to him too much. But I know he would absolutely love it. And, you know, he's intense. And I think maybe the players would love it too. But when it comes to tactically, I think it might be a little lacking just because there's no managerial experience there. The other, well, hey, you know, you know, first time head coach, it just means that you need to make sure you have an experienced assistant. You know, that's how it is in all the other sports. Anybody can be your head coach if you have enough experience on the bench next to you. So that's just what Alexi Laws would need. We need to go out there and get like fantastic assistant coaches to be next to him. I'm all in. Give me Alexi Laws. That'd be fantastic. I mean, do we just hire the entire 2010 South Africa team or the 20, you know, the 2014 Brazil World Cup team as, as our assistants and just go 12 coaches, Dempsey in there? Donna Why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> they do. Everyone. Hey. Tim Howard. <laughs> Brad Guzon. Please. Guys, we'll bring him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tim Howard should just come be our goalkeeper, but I don't know. He could have saved Simba that day. He was fantastic. Anyways. He was yeah, incredible in that Belgium game, and I don't think anyone's going to even get close to that performance anytime no. soon. So yeah. that being said, do we go the Ted Lasso route and hire you know, Nick Saban as our head coach for, for soccer here? You're talking I mean, a guy about who could probably motivate people. And then you assistant coach back, Bill you know, Belichick. Assistant coach Bill, <laughs> head coach Nick Saban, assistant coach Bill Belichick. We'll give him the, the, yeah. the true American spirit here. Yep. But Chad Ochocinco, massive soccer fan. Do we bring Please. one of these guys in just to be a hype man and you know get the team get the team motivated and going for once? Right. Exactly. One hundred percent agree with you. Uh, two more, two more on the hilarious hires though. We're talking Jurgen Klinsman, who I think it would be hilarious, and maybe I think it'll be a little smart too. This dude made our team overperform overperform in the twenty fourteen World Cup. I enjoyed him being in charge. Apparently he was incredibly hard to work with within the US Soccer Federation. You know, it turns out that the US Soccer Federation is filled with absolute morons, but overall, Jurgen Klinsman, you know, just got fired from the South Korean team for a dispute with their star player. He's on the market. He's been here before. He's gotten us, you know, a decent run in the World Cup. And really, we were, we were seconds away from knocking out Belgium in that time and almost moved on to the quarterfinals there. But um, unfortunately, we couldn't get the job done. So it's a hilarious fire, I think, because, what is it, the last three coaches now were rehires, including Greg Berhalter. And it's like we keep just doing the cycle of, you know, hiring the same guy over and over. Maybe Bob Bradley's on that list somewhere. But the Bruce Arena, let's bring him back a third time, you know. Let's just absolutely be completely depressed with our with our team again. Hire hire one of our friends once again. But overall, yeah, we'll see what happens in these next few I would say days, but you know the Federation's gonna take an eternity to pick somebody here. So next couple months probably. Um the one thing I wanna say about that Herb Bernard pick though is, you know, he's the he's the A tier coach, the S tier is like the Klopp and the Zinedine Zidane Zinedine Zidane. But Herb Renard has two offers currently from Egypt and Nigeria, and those are all, all, both like pretty decent teams in Africa. So we'll see what happens. Um yeah, I'm hoping that we can we can pull it off, but at least at least Greg's out of there finally. You know, at least we can move on and start rebuilding. Right. It sounds like mixing it up was definitely the right move. It's just gotten stale. They've gotten worse. You know, when you think back, like, hey, last World Cup, we did get out of the group stage. We got crushed by Netherlands, but, like, we did make it. But since then, downhill, downhill. I Apparently, is this true? I think I saw a stat today. Greg Berhalt, Berg, Berhalter actually has, like, the highest winning percentage in international play of all time of any U.S. coach. I don't know if that's true or not, but I saw that today. And even if that's true, it's like, congratulations. You beat up on Panama and a whole bunch of tiny other island countries in Copa America realm, and the biggest team that you actually beat is Mexico, and they're in a ton of trouble right now, and they suck. So, yeah, I get it. I get it. I'm glad he's gone. I kind of like uh, I kind of like our, foot, our Ted Lasso approach, though. You know, Nick Saban, Bill Belichick, bringing Josh McDaniels to run the offense. Oh, Rob don't. Ryan. Please don't. Rob Ryan, I mean, like, let's just, let's get them all out there. Rex Ryan and Rob Ryan, you meet co-head coaches. I would love yep. to see that for the soccer team. Just in, And on top of that, let's, let's fill the hard dock soccer World Cup season for it. You yes. Know? We need to we need to behind the scenes in the locker room, see what Rex and Rob Ryan are up to, you know, throughout the season. That's my pick. I'm in. I'm going to get it. I'm going to send a letter to the Soccer Federation tomorrow morning. Peyton Manning, offensive coordinator <laughs> for, for the U.S. soccer team. <laughs> 
Oh, outstanding. All right. Clayton, moving on past U.S. soccer, do you have any hot and heavy thoughts on Copa America in general or the Euros in general as we get down to the end of these tournaments? Anything exciting that you would like to talk about here? Yeah, Span- the Spanish team, they've showed up throughout the tournament. They've completely rebuilt. We talked about this a couple videos ago. They are absolutely lighting it up. Um, you know, when, when Germany and Spain were playing each other, I was telling the people around me, I said, this is the actual final here. I think you have the Germany team, who is incredible as well, this tournament, and really went out too soon because of an unfortunate matchup. If they were on opposite sides, this would be a Germany-Spain final, and it would be the best final that we've seen in a long time. Yamin, I can never say this kid's name. Yamin Lamal? Lamine Lamal. Yamal. Lamine, yeah. Lamine Yamal. Lamine Yamal with an absolute banger of a goal in the game, you know, in last round off the post. Um, that Nico Williams Jr. is lighting up. That man has earned himself a giant paycheck, I'm sure, at the end of this tournament. I'm sure one of the big clubs is going to pay a lot of money um, and swoop in and get him. But overall, the Spanish team has really showed up, and even with a bunch of suspensions too. I, I think the question with them was, are they inexperienced? Or are they too young to win? And it turns out that they're the perfect blend of maturity and youth, where they have all the athleticism, um, and these guys are absolutely disciplined outside of the Carvel Hall red card, which is surprising with one of your veterans there, but he's back for the final. I think Spain is going to absolutely bulldoze England. To me, England is in a situation similar to the U.S. where the coach is absolutely crippling the team, but the English team has so much talent that they're kind of covering up the stink of his tactics. So this is going to be a Spain victory here, almost guaranteed. You know, whether that be an extra time or not, who knows. Unless we get some sketchy PK call again, because that was a ridiculous call to give you know to give England the equalizer there. But overall, like Spain is Spain has earned their keep, and I'm excited for them. And they're going to be a potential winner in the 2026 World Cup. When you have a team that's this young, that's lighting it on fire right now. Now two years a lot can change, but at the same time, you have a 16 year old winger who's only going to get better. He's going to be 18 at the time of the World Cup. He'll have two years of professional soccer. Well, three years of professional soccer under him now um, at Barcelona. So Spain is the one to watch. And then transitioning to the Copa America, Colombia just can't lose. You know, talk about a 27-28 game unbeaten streak now, um, draws included. But absolutely incredible run by them. They fired their coach, and they have not lost a game since they fired their coach. So you're talking about a team that has all the pieces right now. Who knows if that's going to last until 2026. But this argentina Colombia final is going to be very interesting. And I, I just think I give the edge to Colombia because a team that hot um, coming up against a team who you know won the World Cup but is getting older. So we'll, we'll see. This is going to be a very good Copa America final. It's going to be a very good um, Euro final, but not as good as it could have been if Germany was on the other side of the bracket there. Yeah, that's fair. I, I mean, that soccer conversation we had a few videos ago was all about can anybody beat Germany? I guess somebody can. Uh, I was super excited. I was actually watching that Spain Germany game when Yamal scored the goal. I was like, I know who that is because I listened to Clayton, and it was fantastic. Oh, Sam, welcome in. Welcome in. Hey. <laughs> Jump. All right. Sam is here as we finish up soccer talk before we get into the next thing that Sam is here for. Clayton, I need your official prediction. If you were a betting man, please give us your pick for each final here, and I will put my own money on the bet <laughs> for the pod because we put our money where our mouth is. I'm going to go with, um, let's see, Spain, 90-minute money line. I don't know what the odds are. And then we'll go Colombia to win. I don't know if that's going to happen in overtime or extra time or PKs, but I, I just think Colombia, it's time for Colombia to win, and I think you parlay the two. <laughs> okay, Colombia and Spain parlay, according to Clayton. I'll write that down. We, 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 odds, so if, they're, if they're even on, on their own, definitely take them both separately and parlay. Take it. <laughs> and parlay it. Okay, Clayton feeling strong about it. All right, that is wrapping up soccer talk.